one of the better public golf courses in all the Bay Area, Rancho Solano, and Fairfield, California. First hole is kind of tricky. There's water in front of you. You're not going to see it. There's water in a road left. And then trouble all down your right. I blasted a driver. Winds typically in your face. Hit the almighty three wood that anyone that watched the channel knows. Lukey with the three wood and the cut is a scary sight. And then something I'm watching going over film study. My shoulders love to peek out to the left. This was a very easy eagle chip that should have been converted for a birdie. Still not a bad leave for a birdie. But I gave myself a tester to start off the round and just misread the putt. A good pace on it. Started off with a par. Very inviting hole. The first time I played this course, I think I got a 9 or a 10. That's kind of sick. The second hole, definitely a strategy hole. You definitely want to think about how can you stay left because everything bad is right. There's water, bunkers. Left is your friend on this hole, except on the approach, which I always seem to do my shoulder trick where I just pull it. And I gave myself kind of a tricky short-sided chip, although... This made me very happy seeing the way I performed this chip because I envisioned it to play out something like it did and gave myself a really good scramble. Terrible filming by you boy, but you can hear it goes in. This third hole at Rancho Solano is always my big enemy. I always end up on this hill. I need to hit a three wood on this hole just to get the ball in play. That was a snap hook. I thought I crushed it and hit a slice because I want to hit the cut and I just couldn't. And uh, that was frustrating. Very, very frustrating. So I ended up over here. For those that watched the vlog a while ago, they might remember this. And that was actually a really good punch shot. I threaded the needle. And this was a lot further than you would think. So if you play this and you get here, really envision about a 55-yard shot. It kind of got caught off by the rough. It didn't get ball first, and I needed ball first there. And it didn't fly on me, and then I had a bunker shot, but I really hit a good bunker shot from there. Very, very tricky, hard hole that basically took away my first two holes that were good. Once again, a misread and a slight push, and that's a double bogey. Fourth hole has always been one of my favorites. If I play from the white or even the blues, just try to aim at those trees and go over the trees, and you give yourself a perfect shot. If you go too far straight, especially with like a driver, you can go in the water. So the goal is, I think, to go over the trees and give yourself a lob or a sand wedge in. I was in between clubs at 80 yards with the wind behind me. So, like, I hit a lob wedge, played to the middle of the green, and it, once again, these are very undulating greens. I wouldn't say they're the fastest greens in the world, but they're definitely not slow. And because of the length of them, it really rewards where you place the ball. This par three, number five, is very tricky. I hit a really, really good 7-iron here. They say it's 175 yards. I ran it over the back, but that's also because I'm a low ball hitter, but that was a crazy feeling. If you ever have this pin location, it's very tricky because everything goes left to right, but then it's deceptive because if you go too far left on your putt, it could actually go down a hill, so it's basically just a bad leave. I was very happy to leave with a par on that hole. Once again, another short par four so if you want to take out driver you could but this is more of just taking left out of play left is a, a hazard and out of bounds right you could lose your ball so just getting something in play and having a wedge in your hand is a victory i had a miss hit off the tee and i really thought this was the shot i wanted to hit i envisioned it i played it out and the wind was behind me and i thought that it was going to catch this slope and kind of come down this ridge and give myself a really good look at birdie you're not going to see the undulation of the green, but really there's a slight slope that feeds to where the hole is, and it looked like the wind was going to move the ball that way, and it just hit with too much spin, I think, or as much spin as I could put on, and it just didn't quite go over. And then I gave that putt too much respect, but knocked in for a par. Really playing pretty good golf, all things considered. Um, not sure where my round is just yet. This is a par 5. Now, this is my alignment issue and hit like if you do this. I thought I was aiming for that tree over to the left, and I was aiming right down the middle of the fairway, which is utterly hilarious. So I need to take more time on the practice range. Thinking about alignment, that was a terrible double cross. And then the worst part is I hit a gap wedge with my Mira 50-degree gap wedge, 
put it stiff, didn't record it, and made birdie, and it just looks like I'm a liar. So sick. Hole number eight, this was crazy. It's like 140 from whites, hit a pitching wedge downhill, wind in my face, and I flew it over to the back of the green. And you never want to go long on this hole. You want to be short because this is just all downhill. And it was those downhill putts that you hate to have where the wind is behind you. You're going downhill. You're not sure how fast the greens are. And I knew when I hit it, I just gave it too much respect. I needed that to go a little past the hole, but not off the green. And I just gave myself a really, really hard par putt because I gave myself this, I don't know, six, five, six footer. That's just a really slippery, all about pace putt. And this is what this eighth hole is. And I didn't play it high enough and look at how far that runs out. So I have a longer putt, but it's uphill and I just was like fed up. So it's like, let's just keep it on the train tracks, knock it in, bogey, three putt. Very disappointing. Number nine is a great hole. Once again, over the top, really crazy swing. But it came off the hill, comes down, gave myself a great opportunity here. The great thing about this hole is it's short, but it's a shot. You have to make a couple of shots to get into position. You're hitting wedge into one of the more interesting greens on the front nine. And this putt was crazy because it looks like it broke right to left. I pulled the putt, thankfully, and it actually broke left to right to left. It was a double breaker, so got lucky, skated with par. Number 10 starts probably like the hardest grouping of holes on this course. There's water that if you can't really get the ball in the air, that can come into play. Hit a good drive and then really crush that three wood. My legs were going crazy on that one. I tried to get everything into it and gave myself a lob wedge in. I was probably about 45 yards in. And having hit that shot on the third, I kind of hit the shot I wish I had. I hit on the third, left myself this putt, and this is a good feeling. Another birdie. So on and reg in all the par fives, two birdies on par fives. Who am I? 11 is probably the signature hole of Rancho Solano. It's a hole where if you hit anything that's like over 215 yards from the whites, maybe 235 from the blues, you're going to put it in the water. This is the downhill slope that you can run into. I hit a five iron that was extra pulley. Did I mention extra pulley? Like something like a lever. And it left me with just a pitching wedge into this green. And definitely if you have a pitching wedge, nine iron or eight iron, I feel so much better playing this hole with those type of clubs than I do hitting like a six iron into this green, which is water in front. And it's always like it's front to back. And it's just, it's a very easy hole to get on in regulation and still make a five. So the goal I always feel is to make par on this hole because it's a very, very tricky hole. It's very easy to get intimidated. There's a lot of visual intimidation. Still, even though I hit a good approach, that shows you just how tricky and slippery this kind of green is. And I still had a comebacker that was, albeit I was probably being a little aggressive because this is a signature hole. And I think that when I play a signature hole well, I always putt a little more aggressive so I could try to go for a birdie. And I converted for par, which that's a great feeling. 12 kind of ends the extremely hard holes on this course. It says it played 200 yards. This was a six iron for me and I in my head I think a six iron carries about 180 175 and I got it there pretty comfortably you're not going to see me two putt for par on this hole because I joined up with someone because it, it gridlocks on the course right here hit a three wood that was kind of shanky but it was okay I tried to shape it and this pitching wedge I kept low and opened up the blade of the club and put it to the middle of the green these back pin locations kill me because this is four putt territory almost where i'm at and i mean that wasn't terrible but it's not great and then it just kind of is like a gut punch when you're putting like 60 70 feet from the hole and you're on in reg so i was a three putt bogey you're not going to see what makes this hole so special, number 14, but the water from 11 comes into play down your left-hand side. Of course, I tried to pull it into the water, but I survived. Hit a little sand wedge. Most players will play sand wedge, gap wedge, nine iron into this green, and then just gave myself a hole high, pretty easy chip. And I'm pretty confident I can get up and down from that location most times. So another hard kind of uphill hole where it's really about driving accuracy and this started my uh pitching wedge 
issues. So I caught this super thinny, but as Justin Rose and Sir Nick say, you want to catch it thin to win. It's better to go thin on this hole because the hole, even though it's a wedge, there's a bunch of bunkers in the front. Just had to try to get this down this hill without running this too far by, and I ended up with a bogey there. So two bogeys on the back nine. Once again, I was actually going to take a three wood on this hole, but I was tired because it was up like 100 degrees out this day, and I pulled out driver by accident, so I just hit driver and whatever. Once again, missed out left. Had this weird side hill lie. The pin was by where the tree was, so I was doing some weird, kind of like that avant-garde filming. I was doing some weird move to try to move the ball to the left. And then I didn't love that putting stroke at all, but I got away with it and the result and left with a par. This is another pretty short par five, I feel, at least from the white tees. Even from the blue tees, it's not that long. If you go over the far left Christmas tree that I didn't document, you can probably have about 150 in. I hit driver and then this five wood that I got from Kepler's. It's absolutely fantastic. Go to Kepler's in Walnut Creek and had this pitch for Eagle. And I thought this was going to go in, but the wind kind of held it up. The wind was blowing into its face. So that's my third birdie of the day. Who am I? I'm a Luki. Okay, so then we're going to the 18th, which is just all uphill. Once again, I hope that doesn't continue. The pitching wedge thin. And it ran all the way up through like the Lynx style mounds to the back of the green to like a perfect location. Ran it a little by the hole. Par. What a round. Thank you for watching this vlog. I appreciate anyone who contributes or subscribes or even likes a video. This is a passion project and I'm just trying to do the best I can.